Floss Tube world. I'm Morgan. Welcome back to my little corner of the Floss Tube community. Um, if you're new here, hello, welcome. I'm, as I said, Morgan, Honeybee Stitcher here on Floss Tube as well as on Instagram. Um, and if you're returning, thanks for coming back and hanging out with me. Happy New Year to everyone. I have uh, not been on since before the festive season. Um, first video for 2022 as well. I um, have been stitching, but I think I've been reading a hell of a lot more. Um, I had a really lovely Christmas break, but I was very lucky that um, Tim spoiled me very much. And I don't take that for granted, but um, got a growling dog at the window. Uh, Tim did purchase uh, me a new camera, which is what I'm filming on. Um, I've always had some form of like video or a photography camera. Um, and then I started to not care as much because my phone pixels, um, megapixels were better than the cameras that I had. Um, but I have always wanted to, to make a few more videos of our trips and things like that. So, um, he brought me a video camera so that I can not only make these videos, but um, just film um, things in our lives and, and holidays and moments and stuff like that. So I'm really looking forward to it. I am learning a lot about it, um, which is fun, testing my knowledge, a new skill. And then I also was given a Kindle. Um, I've always been a reader, but I think the last few years I kind of haven't read very much. Um, when I moved out of home for the first time, I left all of my books at my parents' house. Um, and only recently I, mum was clearing out my old room and said, you need to take these with you. And there's like four or five big boxes. And I was looking through them thinking, I am trying to declutter things in our house. I don't want to keep unnecessary things or anything like that. Um, so I think I am going to probably go through and only keep a few and then um, either donate them or find some way that I can give them to people um, less privileged, if not to just an op shop or something like that. But it got me thinking at the time of how much I wanted to get back into reading, but I didn't want to always have to rely on having a tangible book um, in my hands that, you know, if I wasn't feeling it, I couldn't change to something else. It was kind of all I had. And, um, yeah, so I decided that I wanted a Kindle, um, and got one of those for Christmas and I have not put it down. Um, currently reading Zodiac Academy based on a few people's recommendations and I'm, I'm hooked. Um, it took me about five days to read the first one, probably about the same to read the second, but that was during a work week. So I was only reading it outside of work hours. And then I started the third book yesterday and I have, I think, 20% of it to go today. So I think I read 75, 80% in one day. Um, clearly <laughs> addicted to it. Um, I don't have a, a typical style or like genre of book that I read. I've kind of always just read everything. Um, I grew up reading a lot of books that my mom and my sister would read. My mum had a very broad or has a very broad um, genre of books that she reads. Um, so I would always just, because I couldn't buy my own books and I wouldn't be able to get to the library all the time, I would just end up reading what she had finished reading or even what my brother or sister were reading at school. Um, who likes reading school books for not school reasons? But yeah, I would find that I'd read all of that. So I kind of was reading everything, biographies, fiction, um, love stories, everything. My mum went through a, a big phase of reading um, books from certain countries. Uh, there was, a, I think, a big push for those, and I was studying them at school as well um, for lesser privileged countries, and there were stories of, like, hope and freedom and things. So went through a big phase of reading all of that stuff. I think the only thing I have never gotten into was true crime. And like, I'm not into watching true crime shows or um, podcasts. I don't really listen to or, or watch that sort of stuff. Um, I don't know why. I'm just not on that train yet anyway. I'm sure it might happen one day. Um, 
But if you have any book recommendations on must reads that you've read or are reading or anything like that, shoot them my way. I am open to absolutely everything. Um, one of my best friends is very much, I think she also sparked my, um, my will to get back into reading. Um, she has recommended, let me get this right, A Court of Thorns and Roses. I think that's what it is. I've seen a lot of people talking about it. So um, that's next on my, my list to read after I finished the Zodiac Academy series. Um, but open to anything. So leave me your suggestions below. Sorry, just a little grumpy Nala. Uh, sitting at the window, Tim has gone for a motorbike ride today. Um, and I'm trying to film this before it gets too hot. I need to turn the really loud aircon on. So Nala is just sitting at the window, barking at anyone and anything that flies by. So apologies if you can hear her. Um, so I've got a little bit to go through today. I I think I have definitely prioritized reading in the last two weeks over stitching, but I have still been stitching some stuff. Um, I have some haul. I have a new start. I managed to get a finish before the end of 2021 as well, which I haven't shown on here. Um, and I managed to, uh, to visit our stitch shop when we went to New South Wales. So we spent Christmas um, in New South Wales with Tim's family. We drove up on Christmas Eve. I had to work that day, so I was working in the car, um, which was, <laughs> it was okay, except for the fact that obviously the internet kept, kept cutting out while we were going through um, some 3G or no G spots. Um, but I managed to make it work. So then we spent a week up there. Um, I got a little bit of stitching done. I was reading a different book. So I was kind of in and out between what I was doing and I wasn't too hooked. Um, so I managed to get some progress and then I stitched on the way home when I could. I took one project with me, which was Quaker Turtles um, by Ori TM. And that is on 40 count. And so I was working on that at the house, which was more than fine. Um, I figured it was a monochromatic one thread piece. It was really easy. If I had my iPad with me, I could use it. If not, I'd printed a PDF or I had that, the original copy. So I also had a paper um, version of it at the same time. So it could be very flexible um, in what I was stitching. But driving home, <laughs> that was not the piece to drive home with because uh, 40 count with sun glaring and then shade just constantly intermittent plus also um, I couldn't have anything on my lap that would help see the holes better nothing like I didn't have anything handy I didn't think of it at the time when we were packing the car and then the road is just quite bumpy um, so you know every stitch is a stitch and is progress um, but I didn't get the chance to stitch anywhere near as much as I would have if I picked a different piece but anyway so I, um, I'll go in order of finish, whips, new start and haul, um, just cause that's kind of how I have everything in front of me. Um, so I managed to finish, uh, Buttercup Pixie Blossom Fairy from Nora Corbett. Um, I don't know if that's, I think that's showing up. It might be a bit dark. If I turn my light on, the camera's going to strobe because I've got LEDs. Uh, so this is stitched on 32 count Tudor Rose by Pulse Stitches um, and I've used just all the call for uh, threads and beads. The, those wings, don't know if you can see, no you can't, are full of chronic. So she's done off the whip list. I, um, I've spoken about this when I was stitching it in past videos uh the only other chart that i had or the only other piece that i'd ever really um beaded was the dark queen and the dark queen didn't have uh beading that was anything like what's in this skirt um so i did kind of find that a little bit intimidating um my beads weren't really lying flat or anything I had a little bit of a freak out to a couple of fellow cross stitches in the community but i um I started to, I, I think I just got into the groove of it. I was beading it as I went and I'm so glad I did with this because if I had to go back after finishing all of this and then bead that, I would have died. Um, but I, yeah, I think I, I stopped caring um, that they weren't necessarily perfect as charted because no one's going to know. 
No one's going to know if I've missed a bead um, or if I've had to kind of shuffle something. When you look at it from a distance or even when I look at it, I don't even know what I've had to do. So um, as long as I got them, I stitched them all so that they were lying uniform with my top, um, my top leg of my stitch. And I don't think you can tell any of it. You, you, like it, you wouldn't know that there was any fudging or anything like that done. Um, so that kind of really changed my perception on beading for things moving forward. Um, so I will stop trying to be as prim and proper with it, I guess, and just do it so that I still love it. Anyway, I, so the piece that I was working on in, um, over the Christmas New Year period was Quaker Turtle by Oritam. Um, I, so they posted on their Instagram that they were actually moving everything to PDF or um, having PDFs available. So I purchased this in the hopes that it would work in Pattern Keeper. Um, it will, it doesn't yet. And I have a theory that it's because the chart is three squares across by three squares down, but one of them is a blank page. So the PDF hasn't come with that blank page. So Pattern Keeper still needs it. And I can't work out how to add a blank grid like of those squares needed to the PDF. Um, nonetheless, I have now started stitching this off my iPad on the PDF. Um, so I am actually going to give this one away, I think. Um, I don't want to have to store a pattern if I've got it. Um, in my cloud, there's no point. So this is um, the original, no markings. At the time, I literally just scanned it in to be a PDF um, photocopy on my iPad and that was how I was working on it. Um, I have not needed to use that version as it has come up relatively grainy. I use my work scanner, which is like a high quality um, epic like floor stand printer machine thing um, but it doesn't seem to photocopy things straight or um, a granu it makes the squares uh, gr uh, granule granulated I don't know grainy that's the word I'm looking for um, so I have actually completely deleted it I've just got the PDF um, I have emailed or ATM asking maybe if um, if they are wanting to make their their charts pattern keeper friendly um they said to me that they were looking into it and that they had actually reached out to pattern keeper um directly as well but i'm just for now stitching it off files off the pdf so um let's give this one away <laughs> um if you want to win this i'll send it anywhere I, i'm pretty certain that australia doesn't have issues in posting out it's just receiving post still um, so if you want this one, pop a comment down below um, with the word total in it. A um, couple of kickers, uh, must be over 18 so that I can get your address without it being a concern, not affiliated obviously with anyone or anything. Um, you need to be subscribed to me on FlossTube or on YouTube here as well. Subscribe to my channel um, and I will close the draw probably if I can get to my next video in two weeks, I'll close it. Um, then I might even make a little community post or something, but otherwise, um, it will be by the time my next video comes out. So if you want that one, leave a comment below, but that's what I was working on. So here is my progress. The one thing I hate about this fabric, I love it so much. It just doesn't show up on here at all. That's kind of actually, I think I'm wearing the same color top as what the fabric is. How funny. Um, so here is where I'm at. So the head is under my Q-snap. Um, I finished off this uh, fin um, when I started it. I still had the top before Christmas. Sorry, when I started again, I still had the top of that to go. And then um, I've stitched this whole bottom fin and I've done the outlines on the body. So just to show you. Um, so I've stitched the head and these three motifs, which are the two fins and the side of the body. I started the outline on this one and this one. When I spoke about this ages ago, I had the idea of whether I used two different colors of thread um, and silk to kind of break up it being a monogamous piece 
um, but also because sometimes turtles have like blue and green and, and brown to their, their um, shells. Uh, and then I realized once I, uh, I realized only a couple of days ago that the outlines that I've done were originally the colors that I was going to, um, the motifs I was going to change the color on. So this baby is staying as a monochromatic piece. I can't be bothered changing it. I'm not going to undo it. So um, yeah. To give you a bit of info, this is on 40 count sea glass linen by Nicola at number 12 Stitch Co. Um, on Etsy, located in Brisbane. If you haven't heard me raving about um, their fabrics, check them out. They're fantastic. The thread is agave nectar silk from uh, Armand M&M's. It is an older dye light. Um, the color has slightly changed since actually being released. Um, but it's this beautiful, beautiful blue and I'm stitching this one over two and to show you how much all of that has used, the chart calls for, I think it's three skeins of skeins, however you say it, um, of the one, uh, one, one color cause it's monochromatic. Um, I thread drop, these are the little nuggets from Arm and m ms and I still have all of this to go. So um, for this big monochromatic piece, I absolutely love that I've gone and done it in 40 count, um, one over two, because it's just meant that my thread has carried and lasted a lot longer. Um, and I just love the daintiness. So um, I think I should be able to, I think the, um, top of the body is only like two or three stitches above this point and below this point. So that'll be, apart from the fins, that'll pretty much be the, the width of the shell. So, um, I think I'm going to work on now outlining all the different motifs. Um, and then I'll start working on actually filling them in one by one because I always struggle with overlap on on uh, charts and so uh, that's probably where my counting goes wrong the most so if I can get the outlines done then I can worry about um, filling them in a lot easier. Also I just realized uh, Needleminder is a turtle and it is from Agnes Little Minders um, and I only brought it because I like turtles <laughs> in case you didn't know. Now um, Rearranging my um, plans for 2022 didn't really consist of anything in particular. It was just going to be working on my whips. There's a couple of uh, things that I've got kitted that I don't have everything on a chart or the fabric or something. Um, but there was going to be some new starts. I also want to start um, Golden Bees by Our Forest Embroidery soon. Um, but I think I touched on it. I might have said it in my last video. I think I did. Um, my Eye Candy by Carissa Rose, my full coverage piece. Um, to remind you what that looks like, it looks like this. It has 32,000, I think it's 30, no, 30,000 or something um, white stitches. I think it's um, blanc. blanc. Um, so I wanted to bring that one back out again and try and kind of get some work into it at some point. Um, I started that one as my new year, new start into 2021 and I worked on it for a couple of weeks, um, got a bit of the eye done and then I started to trickle down in some of the confetti and then I put it on my May plans when I was doing whip mania and I was stitching uh, one whip a day every day um, for May. <laughs> it was rhyming. Um, and I stuffed up somewhere in that count and I couldn't get it all to match up down the bottom. So I put it in the sin bin <laughs> and I kind of, it was in timeout and I just never touched it again. Um, and so I wanted to get it back out and actually try and figure it out and get back into it. I got a little bit inspired to start it again, but I didn't actually pick it back up. Um, from, so we all know Darcy, Stitchman Darcy, um, Stitches epic full coverage pieces and the way that he stitches them is focusing solely on the 10 by 10 block um, of the stitches and he completes a 10 by 10 block and then moves on and so I had the idea of whether that would be a way that I tackle this because then I could 
get a chunk of the white done, um, the correct counting and the confetti. And I'm not one that cares about frogging one color or fudging a color like a square here or there or something. I did it a lot in um, my full coverage B and when I saw that it didn't really make an impact, didn't really mind too much. And this one here has so much forgiving um, in all of this splatter everywhere that it wouldn't be a problem. Uh, but what was the problem was that on um, this long light green line, I'd actually, and, and the yellow, I was working on these two because I started to trickle them down from the eye. And this one here was like four stitches off from the bottom. And that didn't annoy me because I could have still done the splattering, but then I would have had to have just fudged four rows of color around it and underneath it to get it to the, the um, bottom of the chart. So I put it away without frogging it, which is a mistake. I will always now try and frog before I put something away. So when I pick it up, I, I pipe, blah, 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 pick it back up again, it's then um, ready to go and the mistake's done. Um, and then Beth Warsaw on, I think it's Beth Warsaw, um, on Instagram, busy bee, silly me. Um, I'll tag her below as well. Uh, posted that instead of starting something new for a new start of 2022, um, they were going to put in 2022 stitches into a whip. And then Mal Rouvray, uh, jumped on, on that one. And I was kind of seeing it on my, my Instagram story feed. And I thought that's probably the best way to get back into this piece. Um, and I'll tackle 2022 stitches of the white or something like that because you know 30,000 white stitches um and it was the goal was to get it all done within the first week of the new year um so I pulled it all out and I started to my plan was to frog everything re-stitch it if I needed to re-stitch around it um and then from there so I didn't lose where I was if I had to frog a hell of a lot um then start the 2022 stitches and this was on, I think, the 30th of December um, to start on the 1st. So then I um, pulled it all out and I worked out where I had gone wrong and it was on that green uh, green leg. But I decided instead of picking it back up and restitching that bit, I just frogged it and I'll um, work on that when I get to that section. And then Stitch by Liz, who has also recently just started up a floss tube channel, does a lot of full coverage pieces um, and... She's a fellow Melbourne uh, stitcher on Instagram, is very active, um, does a lot of um, like Disney and uh, I think like Marvel and superheroes and um, Pokemon and stuff, like does awesome um, full coverages and a lot of them are gridded. I decided that I would uh, grid this and then stitch it in 10 by 10 blocks, um, so kind of combining everyone's method. I then decided that I'm only going to focus on the white and try and knock a fair chunk of that out because that has something like 32,000 white stitches. Um, and I don't want to leave that to the end. And obviously it's a bit hit and miss. It's going to be easy to fill it in in some ways. And then sometimes it's going to be easier to stitch around the confetti. But I just thought for this to try and make like a good chunk of, good dint in it um i would work on just the white um so firstly i'll show you don't mind the gridding by the way my pen um i ended up spilling something on it before i realized and then it's like leaked a little bit um which is annoying but i'm starting to freak out that it's probably not gonna like it's a water removable pen and i've used it before and i've had no issue but i'm starting to have a little freak out that maybe <laughs> After all the effort that I go to with this is not going to come out. So I'm getting a little bit stressy. Um, but I have done, if you can hold the whole thing, this whole thing of white, if you can see it. Um, B, needle minder from Ginger, St Ginger Stitch AU on Etsy. Um, but I've done all of that, that white. So that is the top and corner border done. Um, so the height and, and length of it on this side here is done. 
she's just gonna keep going. So sorry if you hear Nala. Um, so to give you an idea that your error that I made is down this this path here. So I've left that. Um, the rest of it around it is okay. So I don't need to touch it. But I decided I'm just gonna work my way up to the top and just focus on um, on this. So I started this. Um, the start stitch count was. By, uh, 2,588 stitches of all of this down the bottom. Um, it currently is at 5,171 stitches, um, which means that there is a total of 2,583 stitches of white in this whole section here. 87.7% uh, complete. And I still have 29,401 white stitches to go. So that's fun. Um, so I, I finished the 2022 stitches in that first three days of 2021. I went back to work on the 4th of January. So I had knocked it out by then. Um, I think I was averaging seven, 800 stitches a day minimum. It was so hot and we weren't doing anything um, until the cool change had come in. So I'd spend all day stitching and because it was white, I could mindlessly kind of stitch it. Um, all these little markings, I don't know if you can see them. Um, I was marking like the squares that were just white that had nothing, um, like no one odd confetti stitch here or there um, so that I could pretty much just, without even pattern keeper, I could just stitch aimlessly um so I started by working up and I worked on so these rows here um these five rows are complete of all the white um in them above the eye and then I started going across to the edge because I wanted to get that top um solid border in and then I've just kind of started filling in from there and I'm I don't even know there's no method to my madness um I am thinking, because I hate taking things off cue snaps, <laughs> I am thinking that if I can pull this off, I want to do all the white of what's visible on this cue snap and then move it is what I'm thinking. We'll see. I might get sick of it. Um, but I am leaving this next to where I sit to stitch um, and I've got the white thread kind of just sitting there so it's my needles always threaded I can put in a couple of stitches where possible and then on days where I'm not going to be doing anything um trying to put a couple extra stitches in and, and focus um on it and see how we go I still have 57,000 stitches to go so that's fun no 62,000 I don't know whatever there's a lot <laughs> And I wanted to focus on getting the white done so I didn't get bored of it towards the end. And I don't want to fill in the eye straight away because obviously the whole thing is just an eye that I wanted to leave that for some fun. Anyway, I have rambled so much about one chart. I don't even, never, knew I, never knew I could. I'm just going to wait for Nala. So I have um, a new start, which is also a new chart that I recently picked up. So um, kind of also... A whole, I spoke about the fabric in my last video and I kind of just had this real push to start it. Um, so apologies for the crinkles. I um, got the Bella Filipina, Bella Filipina Crystal Mermaid Aquabella. Um, this was one of the most recent releases. I think this was in like October, November 2021. Um, sorry for the glare, but I have actually already damaged the cover on with the sticker um like the wrapping so i'm too scared to now take it out now that i've made my official working copy um but this is her and i think she's absolutely stunning in those muted kind of grays and purples i uh purchased the called for fabric which is uh till i come home from fibrilicious yummy fibers that arrived last year in my last video and so I needed to start her. So I started a very small, firstly, here's the fabric, which I fell madly in love with. And I don't have anything that's going to be able to block out the glare behind, but that beautiful teal um, gradient. 
Um, I started this very, very small start, but I have put um, a few stitches in into the center while I wait for a bigger Q snap to arrive next week um, to show you. I'm starting in like this section of um, her tail. So just a couple of different shades of gray so far. I think there's four shades in there. I started this uh, on Thursday, which would have been the uh, 13th of January. And Erin from Erin Stitches and Yarn and I were talking about um, the fact that she's got a couple of Bella Filipina charts kitted for a while, but has just been, um, I think, a little bit too overwhelmed to start them. And I completely get that. They are, I think, quite daunting. Um, I hate the fact that they're paper charts. Um, the beading I'm kind of growing to and getting used to, but, um, yeah, it just kind of felt quite overwhelming to begin with, but I also really wanted to start it. I think she's absolutely beautiful and like that was really fun to stitch so far. And I, every time I look at the fabric, I'm in love. Um, but we both decided that we were going to start our first Bellas. So we have both started them. Um, I, she's doing aqua. Which one is she doing? Erin is stitching Aquamarina. Okay. So we have both started our Bellas. Um, I am waiting on a new Q snap to arrive because I don't know if I ever told you the saga of the fact that I broke the clamps on one of mine. Um, so the Q snap holding eye candy is 3D printed with a couple of... Um, new connection points because uh, I broke it and I couldn't get another one in and so that's like a makeshift size but I've ordered a new um, Q-snap to come with a couple of other beads that I needed for this Bella so that will arrive next week. Um, I plan on stitching it all as I go so the Q-snap that I've got is another 11 by 17. She is 8 inches wide so I should be able to have her um, with always on the Q snap and then um, I'm, I'm gonna that's a center start at the moment because I was stitching it in a hoop but when I connect her into the Q snap I, I'm gonna um, make it so that I work up and, and finish the, the top of her so her head and um, arms and I will beat it as I go so that um, I can then focus on the tail and, and bead that as I go as well so I did it that way with uh, the dark queen with beading and I was able to leave one of the clamps of the Q snap off enough where I still had enough tension and I could make it work. Um, so I'm hoping that that's the case with this, but we'll see anyway. So that's, um, currently, well, now that I've taken it out of the ring, the hoop, I think I'm going to leave it out until I get the Q snap, but that will become my next focus piece as well. Um, I'm just having so much fun. I love the colors, which I'm not, I'm not usually a big pink person, purple and blue. I love, but not necessarily pink. And there's a lot of pink in her, but I think she's stunning. So my first Bella. Um, some other haul that I got was the Pisces Nora Corbett, um, star sign. I am going to start this one on my birthday. I am a Piscean. Um, I'm going to start this one on my birthday, which is the 21st of February. Um, and I know a lot of people in the floss tube community and in my life in general, the 22nd of February is a very popular day for birthdays. I think I know like eight people um, in, in my world that are born on the 22nd and there's like another 10 in the floss tube community born on, on the the 22nd as well. So anyway, if you're a Pisces or you have this chart to stitch, I'm thinking of starting this one as a stitch along as the hashtag Pisces season sell, um, just to stitch on during the Pisces season. I think that starts on the 19th of February, but I'm going to start it on my birthday. Um, and it is a small little stitch, so relatively easy. I am going to stitch it on some whole fabric that I got. Um, so on this blue, 
Um, so this is a Perman linen, 32 count, and it's Icelandic blue. Small enough. Um, so I purchased that one in plans to stitch it with this, and then I checked that the beads wouldn't kind of um, be too similar, but I don't know if you can kind of tell. There's a lot more green than blue going on. Um, and the, the beads are kind of like a pearly blue so and cream at the top. So it all worked when I kind of flat laid it all together. So I um, managed to get, when we were in Sydney, I managed to head to um, a shop called Stitch. That's all it's called, Stitch Shop AU, I think is what it is on Instagram. Um, we don't have pretty much anything like that here in Victoria and if we do it's nothing I, I don't think it's that big a lot of the stuff that I found or a lot of stores that I found if anything um, are mainly more focused on embroidery than they are on cross stitch itself I was really excited to go check this place out in case there were any charts or things that would normally have to come from the US that I could potentially get here as well um, I managed to walk away with a couple of supplies for the Bella Filipina, otherwise the rest of what I purchased had to do with fabrics. Um, so I showed that Perman linen for um, my Nora Corbett. I got a couple other linens. I've tried to make things as wrinkle free as possible, but it's not going to be that easy. Um, so I got another um, Perman linen 32 count in French lace. Um, this is just another small cut. Um, I plan on doing the Aquarius Nora Corbett for my sister. Um, her birthday's in two weeks. I haven't even brought the supplies, so it's not going to be done by then. Um, but I plan on doing that for her and I thought that fabric would work well for it. And then I got two of, um, this linen. So this is another Perman. I've never even heard of Perman linen and I've come out of there with four. Um, another Perman linen. So this is Icelandic beige in 32 count. And this is a bit of a bigger, um, bigger cut. So um, it's like that peachy beige kind of color. I plan on using that for a couple of other Nora Corbett. Um, what are they? star signs uh one for my mum who is a libra and my sister-in-law and i can't remember what she is no don't remember um but they were neutrals and the colors of those two star signs are i think an orange like a red and orange um base whereas obviously aquarius and pisces are water based so they're that blue green kind of color and then I got these off um, Facebook, off a, a D stash, and I thought that was a really good score. So um, I seem to be building up quite the linen, uh, the fabric stash. Um, so this is a 32 count Lugana. Um, it's called Dark Fantasy, and they are all fabrics from Color Cascade Fabrics. Um, so a green, blue modeled. Um, I thought that was Tim coming home. Um, to give you a bit more of an idea of the colors, so there is a little bit of like a purple blue um, and some green to it. Uh, that is an 18 by 26 piece. Not sure what I'm going to stitch on it yet. Probably a, I don't know, Mirabilia Bella or something like that. But um, just starting to build up that sort of stash. This is another 18 by 26, 32 count Lugana. This one is Misty Mountain Hop. Um, so to give you an idea of the purple, it's pretty much like pretty not modeled. They're, it's very subtle. Um, you can kind of see it. Maybe, maybe you can kind of see it. Um, you can kind of see in the middle there, that's not creases apart from the big plus. Um, that is modeling. And that's a Nala. So, um, again, another Bella or Mirabilia or something. I just thought maybe something less hectic in fabric, um, like in the modeling. So it might be a little bit more subtle. 
And then the last one that I got looks to be the September 2017 Fabric of the Month Mystery Fabric. This is called Lavender Fields. Again, another uh, 18 by 26, 32 count. This is a Belfast. Um, so to give you more color idea, I have in my mind and it will come down to what it all looks like and whether it will work. Um, this piece for uh, Luna Mystica from Bella Filipina. In my order that I'm waiting on for from JK's, which has another um, Q snap in it, I have also brought Luna Mystica. Um, so whether the purples and the colors in this will work. Um, I am wanting to also do Soul Tropica and kind of I originally thought of doing them on not the same fabric because one's green based and one's like purpley blue based but a similar fabric so with this being so modeled getting something in the green that is modeled I did find on the fabric viewer I think again it was another pulse stitches fabric um for the green soul tropica but then the under the sea fabrics fabric of the month subscription has a green I think it's Eudore Eudore I don't know how to say it um for this January fabric of the month and that I'm getting in a 32 count so I might wait and see kind of what's coming there's I think four fab three or four fabrics that Leslie still has um that are being shipped as a US no a UPS um shipping once your door is done so it'll depend on what's in there and um yeah maybe they might both be suitable fabrics for the the two but yeah I think when I when I saw this one um Lavender Fields, I thought maybe that could work with the colors, but I don't have any of that kitted up to know what will work. So we'll see. But yeah, that's all the haul that I have for now. Um, I'm still waiting on a few more things to come through. I didn't realize how many things of fabric and um, all that that I've actually brought lately. So I went from not having any stash to now having a pretty decent stash. So Next up, I need to figure out how to actually store it all and where to store it. Um, so if you have any tips on fabric storage, let me know. I did just want to finish off um, the video. Just my, I, I don't, I don't do this for numbers or anything like that. Um, I really love coming on here and, and connecting and yeah, I think I said at the very start, like I, I haven't necessarily gone and watched back all my videos, but I've watched bits and pieces and seeing how much I've changed in what I stitch now and what I stitch on and what I use um, was kind of for me the main factor in why I did this. In saying that, my most recent video um, before this one, just before Christmas, which was my uh, 2021 wrap up, finish parade and whip parade, um, I like went off the charts. I, I haven't had a video with that much interaction um, or, or views or anything like that. So if you found me from that video, firstly, thank you for sticking around and hanging out. Um, but yeah, that was just crazy. So um, it got me thinking it's kind of the first parade video that I've done. I don't normally have enough whips to show in a, like a whip parade or a finish parade or anything like that. Last year was like the full year um, that I had been stitching in the community on Instagram and FossTube. So that's why I had enough stuff to show. Um, but is that, uh, are those kind of videos, the finish videos, whip videos uh, or kit videos, which I don't have much on at the moment, but is that what you as a community like to see because in my numbers that sh that to me shows that that was probably my most popular um content that i've put out there so I, I i thought maybe that's what it was um or whether it was just the timing that i managed to upload it that meant that it, it was that popular but if that is something that you do prefer to see i'd love to know i'd love your feedback on that because it will be something that maybe i look at doing more um as the year progresses, I might um, get the urge to start a lot more things and have like a mid-year whip parade or something like that. So yeah, any feedback is positive feedback and I'd love to know. 
Otherwise, um, feel, uh, feel free to head over to my Instagram, check me a uh, follow over there. I'm usually very active and I do, regardless, always respond to DMs and things like that. I haven't been posting as much because I've been a little bit book distracted. Um, but yeah, feel free to head over there. It's at Honeybee Stitcher. Um, would love it if you could subscribe on the, um, my channel here on, on YouTube. Um, and yeah, don't forget as well. I did forget. So don't forget, uh, giveaway for this one. Uh, use the word turtle in your comment below. Um, and I'll draw that when I do my next video. Otherwise, uh, signing off for now, take care, stay safe, stay healthy where you can, and I will see you all very soon. Bye. Yeah.